Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us on this Monday. Brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Purdy's have served this valley for decades because they've been able to find whether it's auto, home, life, business. Look, you want to go to the professionals that are also great people to deal with. And that's Purdy Insurance. They'll find the best price, the right insurance, and they will take care of that policy for you, update it whenever need be. They're always looking for any way to help you. It's Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Pleasure to be in the Sunbury Motors studio. The great people at Sunbury Motors. Outstanding product. Great sales staff. Service department, second to none. All at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. So I'm going to go to Iron Front, huh? On Market Street, August 21st. Our RSV... annual, annual whoop de doo that's right, yeah. RSVP. Did you see the RSVP part? I sure did. RSVP by August 14th. Kevin at Kevin H at WKOK.com. AKA. <sighs> the suit. <laughs> you took it over. How about that? What, the event? I don't know about the event, but just at least the planning part of it. Planning part of it. Uh, I feel like I'm dealing with the party planner of the Titanic. Uh, all right, so... <laughs> <laughs> Steer clear. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, our first visit to the Iron Front. Can't wait to go in and check it out. It's going to be terrific. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've that been hearing rave reviews. I've been hearing rave reviews about that place. Yes, I'm looking forward to it very much. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> that would be great. All right, so Trevor Bauer fires the ball into the seats. Well, not to the seats. He threw it to center field. Now, do you realize from the pitcher's mound to center field how far it is? 400 feet to center field. That means he threw the ball 340 feet. He threw the ball the length plus of a football field to get into the seats. I mean, you got to give the dude credit. I got to give him, I mean, I don't know about you. I give him credit for making it. Now, what he did was wrong, immature, the whole thing. Yeah, I got it. Okay. We all know that. It's wrong and immature. Okay. <laughs> but it was impressive. I'll say, <laughs> it turns out how far he threw it. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Quite the distance. At least you get uh, more, of a, more of a heads up right. that it's heading in your, in your direction with it. So right. Now, now it, well, now he might end up being traded out of all this. I mean, let's let's be honest about it. I mean, he's still. I thought he was he was a trade possibility to begin with. And again, if you're in the playoffs, you don't want him near a drone. You remember that incident in 2016 where he cut his finger. Remember, he's on the mound. The blood's dripping off his finger, his pinky. And how did he do that? Oh, this is how he did it. <laughs> He tried to grab his homemade drone. Really? Oh. <laughs> Trevor Bauer. 
All right, the Phillies salvaged the game yesterday with Atlanta. I talked with several scouts in the last few days. Scouts have been all over Medler Field, LeBronel Park, various teams. I'm not going to get into, by the way, the names of the teams because I think that would be unfair for me to do. Um, because you know you're you're in casual conversation with some of these people and you're trying to you know get a little info here and there from them in talking with them. So I've always felt it was always best to you know keep private private but then in general conversation you can talk about it okay good so here we are in general conversation talking about it one of the guys that I talked to there to me there are only eight teams that are out of it there are only eight teams that are out of it I mean I'm I'm talking definitively out of the playoffs on July 29th where it would take a miracle, and let's face it, realistically, they have no shot of getting there. Teams such as the Royals, the Orioles, the White Sox, the Detroit Tigers. Let's see. I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. Marlins? Well, the Marlins and Pirates are the two National League ones. I mean, so they catch the six. Um, let me think. Um, Tigers... Oh, Seattle. Who's the eighth one? I don't remember who the eighth one was. Seattle Mariners are definitely one. Unfortunately, because like you know, the Mariners may do something. They may set a mark for being the team in first place, the second longest in the history of baseball, and finish last. Believe it or not. I mean, those are the only ones that are out of it right now. I mean, the Pirates and the Marlins are definitely out of it. Now what do other teams do? This is where this is where this second wild card makes it very interesting. And in the second wild card, more teams are obviously in it. So this is something we've talked about before. Uh, Tigers, Orioles, Royals, Blue Jays, I'm sorry, and Mariners and White Sox, and then, of course, the Pirates and the Marlins. They're the only eight that are out of it. The other 22 are in it. I mean, the Colorado Rockies are in last place. Yet yeah, you and I both know the Colorado Rockies are actually a, not a great team, but they're a decent team. But they're only seven games out of the wild card, as are the Padres. Even the Mets are six games back. But they just beat the Pirates in four straight, so I don't know. Does that count? I don't know. But that's where they are. There's 22 teams right now that can still make the postseason, realistically. So the scout I was talking to from a team, his team is in the neighborhood, okay? A couple games, one side or the other, of 500. All right? So that's where they are. And he, he looked at me and he said, Steve, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. He said, he said, you know, he said, we could be, he said, we could be buyers. He said, I'm out here looking. He said, either way I'm looking. He said, even if we sell, we may, you know, there may be a guy I'm looking at here or there. Um, that's a possibility. He said, or we may be buyers. Same story. We may be looking at somebody here or there. That's a possibility. And so we're just sitting there waiting to see. He said, but for our management, he said, it's a really tough call. Really tough call. It's, I mean, that's, that's where they are right now. In that tough call area. And they don't quite know what. He says, he says, I'm out here just doing what they asked me to do. He said, I'm taking a long and hard look at what's going on here. He said, but in the end, he said, it's going to be their call. He says, and we are in that spot where, where 
He says, look, we can get to the wild card. We can do it. Is that good enough? He said, they have to make that determination. Now, I'll tell you one team this was not a scout of. He was not a scout of the San Francisco Giants. The Giants have changed everything. The Giants were absolutely before going to be a seller. Now look at them. Hey, do you still want to tr- do you still want to deal Madison Bumgarner now? You've battled back to two over five hundred. You're two and a half back in the wild card. Really? Now what do you do? And the Giants, by the way, are playing the Phillies at Citizens Bank starting tomorrow. What do the Giants do now? Because remember, Bumgarner was an absolute. He is being dealt. No doubt. Now, he'll wave his no trade, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? The Giants are back in it. I mean, Bumgarner may be 6-7 and seven on the year, but guess what? He's got 140 strikeouts to 29 walks. He's been, you know, his record may not be great because the team around him for the most part hasn't been great. But he's got a 3.74 ERA. He's got 140 strikeouts. Jeff Smarge is another guy, you know, he's won seven games for them this year. Now, Drew Pomerantz, I mean, obviously he just fills a spot, but and they already dealt Derek Holland. But what do they do here? I mean, Smarge's ERA is three nine five. That's not bad. Bumgarner's ERA is three seven six. Not bad. They're you know they both are owed money, but the Giants are back in it. The Giants are two and a half back in the division. I mean, assuming the wild card, not in the division. They won't win the division. The Dodgers will win that. But what do you do? And you're the Phillies. The Phillies need another starter. That's obvious. Probably need another bat. The Braves, the Braves weekend didn't work out well. They had to win yesterday to salvage the last game of the series. I think the Phillies, I want to say they're a game back in the wild card. Does that sound right? One game, yes. So they one game back out of the playoffs right now. So the Phillies are obviously got to be in a position where people are thinking, how do we get there? Let's see. Yeah, they're one game back of the Nationals right now. Because obviously the Cardinals are the Cubs. One of them is in first place. Okay, so so it's just for the sake of... Okay, the, the Cubs are in first place. They're the divisional leader. Let's just say that for the sake of it, even though they tie with the Cardinals. That means the Cardinals and Nationals will play the one-game playoff at St. Louis. Or if the Cardinals are in first, then it's a one-game playoff at, at Wrigley. But the Phillies are one game back, and they're tied with Milwaukee. Then it's the Giants who are two and a half back, and then Arizona's three and a half back. I mean, there are a lot of decisions that have to be made here. The problem with the Phillies is the number of runs they give up. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the Phillies have produced 503 runs this year. 503. That's good. Really good. Okay? And guess what? They're a minus 22 in run differential. I don't know. Crazy. Second wild card's created all of this. But, like, you look, for example, let's look at some of these teams here. The White Sox. I think the White Sox are actually building a good young team. They're building a good young team. So they're, they're going to get there. They're building a good young team, and I think they're on the path to down the road. Not in this year, but maybe middle of next year, respectability. Seattle completely mystifies me. I don't know. Toronto, I think, is right now just circling a fogged in airport. Kansas City's really struggling right now. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I think the Orioles, it may take three years, but they're actually building something organizationally that I think in three years you'll see Baltimore move. Okay, there'll, there'll, there'll be upward mobility there. Detroit, I don't know where they're going. 
the Marlins will eventually in, in three years be actually, I think, will be pretty good. The Pirates won't be. Yeah, the Pirates, the, the two, the two hamstrung by, by ownership. I mean, they've got some really good people there, but they're too hamstrung by ownership. Simple as that. You get anything going. And not only that, but, you know, and part of the budget is I, I'd like to know how much, um, how much money they're spending on scouting compared to everybody else. Because what's critical to the Pirates to be successful is they must scout well, draft well, sign well. That really is the formula for them. Speaking of the Pirates, uh, they have uh, struck a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Great. Within the division. Even better. Love it. (laughs) Jordan Lyles, who was supposed to start for the Pirates tonight, he has been traded to Milwaukee in exchange for is it a, a, a bucket a bucket of balls? Uh right handed pitcher Cody Ponce, if I pronounce his last name. Yeah. Uh he was the Brewers' second round pick in twenty fifteen. And this year he spent most of his uh, time at double A Biloxi. Great, he's going to Altoona. Lyles was five and seven, five point three six ERA. Mm-hmm. Uh that was his stats going into tonight's game when he was supposed to start versus Cincinnati. Um, they're going to the big Brewers. boys six six two forty. Who Lyles? Uh Cody Ponce. Oh, Cody Ponce. Yeah, that's well. Stats with Biloxi this year: three point two nine ERA, forty four Ks, and twenty seven relief appearances. That's nice. Look. You know how I feel about the prospect thing, right? As you know, I, I'm sit there. There's a reason you're a prospect. You know what a prospect is a fancy word for? Never have done it before. Doesn't mean he doesn't have potential. Doesn't mean that. Hey, yeah, you can have potential. I, I got you know. At one point, everybody's labeled as having potential. Jordan Lyles. That huh. doesn't change the balance of power. No offense. I don't think there are a lot of people in Pittsburgh are going to be upset that Jordan Lyles got traded. I mean, you know. If you're a Pirates fan, if you know who's pitching, let us know. We haven't heard at this point. I don't know. Who will, Clint, who will start tonight? I don't know. Clint Hurdle knows. He's, yeah. Um. Oh, it's going to be Alex McRae. He will start in place of Jordan Lyles. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Lyles is twenty-eight. As if he's. He, I mean. He's been with the Astros, the Rockies, the Padres, and now he's with the Brewers. Hmm. Yeah. He's actually a first round he was actually a first round pick of the Astros, you know that? Long, long time ago. Actually came up with the Astros. Then they sent him to Colorado. I wonder if that, I think I think the spikes faced him when he was at Tri City. If I think back on that, so I knew he wasn't part of the group that was here. That I did know. Um, and as for Ponzi. Uh, Here. Ding, ding. Yep, he did pitch for Tri City. As a matter of fact, yeah, there we go. You doubt me. It's all you do is doubt me. Never. No, you doubt me. It's all you do. New. No. Cody Ponzi? How do you spell that name? 
Uh, P O N C E. Okay. Uh, he's got a wild haircut. He's a big guy, six six, huh? Twenty five years old. Played college baseball at Cal Poly Pomona. Let's see what they acquired here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you're one in three or three two nine. One for four in save opportunities. Four for seven in save opportunities in his career. I can see why the Pirates went after him. His last two appearances, he went one inning, gave up uh, two hits and a run. Last appearance, he went one inning, gave up two hits and two runs. That's exactly what the Pirates are looking for. In fact, his ERA has gone from 2.45 up to 3.29 over his last four appearances. His last four appearances, he's given up eight hits, five runs, and five innings. Okay. And it's, he's repeating. This is, by the way, his third year in double A. You know that? It's his third year in double A. He is definitely going to Altoona. See, this is where the Internet's hurt the Pirates. You want to know how it's hurt them? Their fans can look it up and they can read. All right, we'll come back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. For nearly 100 years, Purdy Insurance has been your locally owned, family operated source for insurance products. With a staff of over 20 and partnerships with some of the industry's most trusted companies, Purdy has the experience and resources to get the job done. Whether you need personal home and auto or complex business insurance solutions, Purdy will help you navigate through the process. Call today at 570 286 5855. Or better yet, stop in their Sunbury office to see what Purdy Insurance can do for you. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Sunbury Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Mertz family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle is worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applications applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way. The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us. Brought to you by Purdy Insurance, Market Street in Sunbury. Go to purdyinsurance.com. Auto, home, life, business, whatever it may be, they are the insurance experts. And... We're in the Sunbury Motors studio, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Jordan Lyles to the Brewers for Cody Ponce. I would expect Ponce to end up in Altoona. Go double-A to double-A. He's been in double-A the last three years. Maybe he goes to Indianapolis, but triple-A, but we'll see. How much activity there is this week, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. There's so many teams in the race, 22 out of 30, to get to the playoffs. What do you do? What do you do? It's. I think it becomes. Do you stand pat? Do you make a small? You know. Okay, I need a little help in the bullpen, so I get an arm. I give up a prospect. I mean, Lyles is going to end up starting, I think, for the Brewers. They need another arm to start. But he's 
he plugs a gap, I guess. That's about what he what he does. But the Brewers felt they had to do it, and they gave up a prospect. And we'll see. Meanwhile, we've got... I talked about this last night on the show, and Kevin brought this up on the show on Friday. You know, about... And we're always talking about what can make the the game of baseball better. It's a we've, we've talked about this a million times, so I'll make it a million and one here for a moment. And something came up in last night's game that I did. It was State College in West Virginia. I was doing the game on TV, and Tom Filer, former major league pitcher. One of the teams he pitched for primarily happened to be the Tigers in his career. Comes out to the mound. All right, so he comes out to the mound. And he's not out there to take the pitcher out. And I pointed out that I think the only time you should go to the mound is to take somebody out. I was working with Josh Sperber at the time, and Josh disagreed with me, and that's fine. Josh is you're absolutely entitled to disagree with me. I mean, because this is one of those everybody has their own opinion. And I'm looking around, I'm saying to myself, man, there are 4,000 people here at the park tonight. Right now, you're wasting everybody's time. Okay? Everybody's looking out going, do something. He said, well, you know, sometimes you have to go talk to these guys. I said, well, guess what? I got every half inning to do that. I got every half inning to sit there and talk with you. I got nine built in breaks in the game. Where you're in my when you're in the dugout with me. I I I remember when in the World Series in nineteen seventy two. They've always had this rule where you get the two mound visits, but in the postseason World Series you actually were allowed unlimited visits. And Dick Williams, who was the manager of the Oakland A's, abused it so badly where he was going out every... It seemed like he must have made, in an inning, he'd make three, four mound visits. He's changing pitchers left and right. Okay. Well, he wasn't breaking any rules. He wasn't breaking any rules at all. But they finally changed that rule after that World Series. I think it's got to get to the point where, like, no more mound visits. I'm sorry. No mound visits. I mean, stop wasting people's time going out there. I mean, and you know that, number one, if you've mismanaged the game, and you don't have a reliever up. Oh, we better get somebody up. Well, whose fault was that? I think it's your fault. You didn't read the situation right. Like all of us had to pay for your mistakes. We're all just sitting there. And I just don't, you know. Baseball's got to find, it has to sit down and figure out what is wasting our time as fans. And mound visits happen to be one of those where they're wasting time. Now, I know you have the the six-visit rule now. But remember, the six-visit rule does not include taking the pitcher out. And to me, the only time there should be a mound visit from the dugout... Should be when it comes time to take out the pitcher. It is the only sport of the four major sports where management is physically on the field. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, Sean. I just, I mean, Oh well, you know, sometimes you got to talk to them about their release point, whatever. Hey, guess what? 
I had three days to work with you on this. That that was a huge gripe of uh, your brothers for sure, and and he he's brought it up more than one time on the show. Just pace of play and and last weekend getting a chance to see the Pirates Phillies game. That was the one thing I noticed, and I don't think I saw it the last time I was at a major league game, and it was on not on the main jumbo board, but on one of the strips, you know, right between the suites and the and the first row of the club mm-hmm. seats. You right. could see uh, listed, maybe even right next to left on base, it was uh, mound visits left. Right. Which is, you know what, that's fine. I mean, I don't, I, I don't mind, you know, that whatever. But you know what? I'm sick of the pitching coach, with all due respect. Pitching coaches do a fine job, not trying to wreck their job. But I'm sick of them coming out and wasting everybody's time. And is it just me? It just seems like nine chances out of ten when you see that, you see the home plate umpire at least walking halfway down to the pitcher's mound to say, hey, guys, break it up. Let's go. Well, they're waiting. Believe me. How many times do you see the pitching coach leave before the umpire gets there? Hardly ever. Most of those guys are out there taking as much time as they are possibly allowed to have to talk to their pitcher. I'm sorry, but that is just a waste of time. But you've already got nine built-in opportunities to talk to your people. Nine. Okay. Minimum eight. Yeah, you're the hitting coach. You want to talk hitting with them in the dugout? Go ahead. Pitching coach, you want to talk pitching with them in the dugout? Go ahead. Hey, your release point here, here, here. Hey. You want to go to the mound? You go to the mound and take the dude out. Hey, that the, the pitching coach visits okay, are wasting the fans' time. I'm not saying it's a waste of time for the pitching coach. I'm not saying it's a waste of time for the pitcher. But it is a waste of time to the fans who bought tickets, and it's a waste of time for those people watching on TV. Yeah, what was the total time of last night's Red Sox Yankees game? Was that what three forty six? Yeah, it was because hmm. I I got there, I finished up my game, and I think I saw the last three innings. Last three innings. And you know. With a cameo appearance by Jennifer Lopez in the broadcast booth, stopping by with a birthday cake for A Rod. <sighs> okay, great. <laughs> I, I I saw a picture of it online today. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Really?" Jessica you Mendoza. Anybody- Je- Jessica Mendoza leaned. She's kind of leaning back to her J Lo. Not once, but twice. She goes, "You gonna sing happy? Yes, you, you, you gonna sing happy birthday." <laughs> and it's like she totally ignored <laughs> Jessica hey, Mendoza. Get out of here. Like, Sorry, not like, singing tonight. Like she wasn't even sitting there in the chair. <laughs> yeah. I get paid to sing. I'm not going to do it here for free. Right. Um He's like, This has been this has been the summer is, of cakes. <laughs> I mean, but is, but is there anybody out there you know that likes that broadcast? That may even be one of the... Okay, it's interesting. Monday Night Football last season and Sunday Night Baseball may be, in terms of critics and fans, two of the most disliked broadcasts in all sports. If you had a choice, would you go with ESPN TV to listen to for Sunday night, or would you prefer ESPN Radio's Boog Chambi and Chris Singleton? I prefer my local guy. Uh, Michael K is not out there right now, but I prefer Michael K or I prefer Dave O'Brien. They're there every day. They're just better. I mean, it, what's really interesting is that the two most panned broadcasts right now, panned, are Sunday are, are Monday Night Football. And Sunday Night Baseball. 
And what do the two of them have in common? Same network. ESPN. And to be honest with you, part of it is, well, and it, and they're, they're doing this in some in college football where they're not doing enough talking about the game in front of them, and they don't know enough about the people in front of them, okay? Like in the ninth inning last night, okay? Was it the ninth inning? Yeah, it's a 9-4 game. The Red Sox get a couple guys on. It's not as if the Red Sox don't have a lineup. And they're showing you the upward, the upper cut of Xander Bogart's swing with some graphic because the producer, see, the problem is the producers and the directors that are doing these things think it's a TV show and they don't think it's a game. Now maybe I'm old fashioned, but to me they're all they're still games where they're trying to drive some conversation or some trying to stop it, do the game. I'm not so sure ESPN knows how to do the game anymore. Like games. Too busy talking about everything else. Everything's always about something else that's going on. It's never about what's in front of them. And to be honest with you, Sean, it's just, or some gimmick. You know, we we got this way of showing you his swing. We're gonna the producer forces it in. We're gonna have to look at it now. It's like, oh my goodness. So you got you got a couple million hostages sitting there looking at some graphic that means nothing. Well, when it comes to replays, what have we seen over the past few years? You get those axis replays, three sixty. That means now it's nothing. all now it's like exit velocity, speed of the ball going out of the yard. I mean, those are nice add-ons. It's nice little, wow, I went 110 miles. Away. Okay, it went fast. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's just a nice little add-on, but it's all it is an add-on, and they make it into the biggest deal going. It's really super important. Now, I cleared the fence. I assume it was hit hard. Well, you're right with add-ons. You think, uh, but back then though, you think, okay, that's information that I would find on Sports Center when I get my highlights. Right. But now it's, now it's well, like commonplace. Yeah, now it's yeah part of the live broadcast every night. Yeah, it's part of the game. I mean, we get that at, at our games. We'll get distance of home run, exit velocity, but like they're just to me, it's just like color add-ons. Uh, it's it's not the major wow. Thing I mean, there was, last night was a ground ball that was hit sharply underneath the glove at third, and I got the exit velocity on the ground ball. It's like, all right, that that's fine. I mean, he's on first. That's like the most important thing. I, uh, you know, <sighs> that's why I like what I do. Like, that, that's why I like what I do, Sean. Like. Jack and I, Dick and I, Joe Putnam, we just do the game. Yeah, well, we have a little fun here and there with something, but we do the game. We don't really care about all the other mumbo-jumbo. We don't sit there and go, hey, let's talk big picture about the college football playoff. Every ESPN broadcast in college football has to talk about the college football playoff because, of course, they carry it. So now you got to go through like, oh, hey, really, Brock, you're, who are your top four? Okay, here's one over here in the corner. I don't care. I'm trying to watch this game. I don't know a lot about Washington State and Stanford. Tell me about them. Educate me on why he's a good player. Why is he a good player? I mean, the Yankees and Red Sox are easy for me. I know a lot about both teams. But what if the Sunday night game last night happened to be San Diego and Texas? I know a little bit about San Diego. I know a little bit about Texas. But educate me. Tell me more about them. I don't need some graphic showing why the uppercut swing of some guy. I could care less. It doesn't mean anything to me. But they had the toy. So since they had the toy, they had to use the toy. And the producer decided that he had to use the toy. And like I'm telling you right now, you can't start doing things in such a way on TV 
People are tuning into the games to watch the game. They're not there to watch the toys. You can't get to the point where you're starting to ruin the experience. And why is it that the two most panned broadcasts are considered by the worst by fans and media are Monday Night Football and Sunday Night Baseball? And what do the two of them have in common? That's right. The worldwide leader. I thought they'd help sports. I didn't think they'd ruin it. We'll come back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Sunbury Motors and our great friends at Purdy Insurance. <laughs> 